So, just to quickly recap what we introduced in terms of photosynthesis, we stated that it was the conversion of light energy into chemical bond energy. And we mentioned that light was all about the electromagnetic spectrum, looking at that visible light in the form of a high energy photon. Sunlight gives off photon. Photon either will return back to its ground state or it will get accepted by an electron acceptor. And that's what photosynthesis was all about. What we're now going to be looking at more specifically is this uh, basic location of where all this is occurring because it's important to understand whenever you're looking at a biochemical process like photosynthesis, where it's occurring and why it's occurring at that specific place. Why has evolution and biology chosen that place for this process to occur? And we're going to be looking in, this, in these next two flowcharts um, at chloroplast. So this first flowchart will be entitled chloroplast 1. This is where all of this action is going to be happening. In chloroplasts, which are of course exclusive to eukaryotes, all eukaryotes, not all eukaryotes, but eukaryotes have chloroplasts, and which ones specifically? Plants. Plants are eukaryotes and thus they have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are a membranous structure. And speaking of a structure, let's actually go over it very quickly. The structure of a chloroplast is very similar to a, what did we talk about? Where did respiration occur most of it? It occurred in the mitochondria, right? And it's very similar to that uh, mitochondria. Uh, chloroplast has a double membrane. And of course, we know whenever we write double membrane, we're going to write underneath it inner and outer. So it has a double membrane, inner and outer. It has a stroma. Remember the mitochondrial matrix, that sort of fluid in between the two membranes? Think of the stroma as the same thing, as the fluid. And we'll talk about that a little bit more detail later. And then there are also what are called thylakoids. Thylakoids are just literally stacks. So if we imagine this being a, uh, a plant cell, or let's say this is actually the chloroplast. I'm going to draw one more membrane right here. So I have an inner membrane the one that I just made, and the outer membrane. And then I'm also going to have thylakoids. Thylakoids are just stacks like this, literally disks, sort of, that um, stack together. And thylakoids are a very, very important location of many photosynthetic processes that we'll look at. But just understand that these stacks, and you should definitely look at a figure in your textbooks to give it a lot more justice than I just did, um, are the thylakoids. And the thylakoids themselves have membranes. So many membranes, and we're going to be looking at what's going on at each of them. Um, in addition, chloroplasts, uh, we have to sort of recap what we understand about light, because this is where the light consequences will occur. So light has this amazing ability, ex exclusive ability, let's say, to turn um, itself in the form of light energy into that chemical bond energy that we talked about. That's what photosynthesis is all about. But photosynthesis is occurring in the chloroplast, and there are certain light consequences that we have to understand. When light combines with matter, any sort of matter, and what I mean by matter is anything, I'm literally meaning anything, like a chloroplast. If a light combines with a chloroplast, let's say, a couple of things can happen. You can either have transmission of that light, and we have briefly went over this in our previous video, but now we're giving um, fancier terms, let's say, to uh, the things that we discussed previously. We can either have reflection of that light, or we can have absorption. Now, I want you to think. Which one of these, based off of our previous video, most closely resembles what happens to photosynthesis, what happens in photosynthesis? And we'll go over each of them, and then at the end of it, you'll obviously know. But transmission is the idea of light, um, just simply, it goes through the matter. It goes straight through it. I don't think that's what we talked about in our previous video, and that is not what happens in photosynthesis. Light does not go straight through a chloroplast or straight through wherever it's going. It obviously has to have something happen to it. We have to harness its energy somehow. Reflection is the idea of light being re-emitted. And we don't re-emit the light that is absorbed because we do not go back to our ground state. Remember, going back to the ground state means that you either give off heat or you give off light. Giving off light is the same thing as reflection. It's the same thing as re-emitting light. And that's not what happens in photosynthesis. Of course, what happens in photosynthesis is the absorption of light because we have to harness it and we have to do something with it so that it can turn into chemical bond energy. So those are the light consequences. When light combines with matter, when light combines with the chloroplast, what is it going to do? It's going to be absorbed, okay? And it's going to be absorbed in a very, very interesting manner. 
And in order to understand this absorption, we have to look at photosynthetic pigments. Photosynthetic pigments. So we now understand that light has to be absorbed, but it has to be absorbed by something. What it's going to be absorbed by, you guessed it, are these photosynthetic pigments. We can do a very basic definition of photosynthetic pigments by stating that these are um, substances, or let's say a photosynthetic pigment is a substance that absorbs visible light. I want you to underline absorb so that you sort of reiterate that definition. Substance that absorbs visible light, and once again, absorption, light plus matter, this is the definition in reality. This is our functional definition of photosynthetic pigments, substance that absorbs visible light. Um, speaking of function, we can very briefly talk about the function of photosynthetic pigments. It should be pretty obvious by now, but their job is to, and this is sort of a repetitive but still important, capture and then also absorb, because you have to capture, you have to get the light and then absorb the light for photosynthesis for photo, and I'll just write S-Y-N, photosynthesis. Um, as far as location is concerned, photosynthetic pigment location, you should definitely know this. This is something that's going to be important when we start talking about the actual process of photosynthesis and what's occurring in terms of the electrons that are moving around. The location of photosynthetic pigments um, uh, is specifically embedded in the thylakoid membrane. And from this point forward, I'll just write thylakoid membrane since I'm going to be using it a lot as TM. So you see each of these circles, um, they each have a membrane. And this membrane right here where my mouse is specifically pointing to, that's where we imagine a bunch of photosynthetic pigments embedded. Definitely, definitely, definitely look at your textbook to see this in action, to see this uh, in much greater detail than I can possibly draw. So now we understand the location, function, and definition of photosynthetic pigments. Let's talk about a photosynthetic pigment, specifically everybody's favorite and the most famous, chlorophyll. Makes sense now, right? Chlorophyll is found in the chloroplasts. So chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is considered the main photosynthetic pigment. Main photosynthetic pigment. It's the number one guy. He does the most important job of photosynthesis, which is absorbing that visible light, starting everything up. So how does he do this? We have to look at the structure of, of the chlor chlorophyll, and then we also have to, of course, look at um, a specific version of chlorophyll known as chlorophyll A. That's something you should definitely be able to understand, that um, we're going to look at this, this structure, and a specific form of chlorophyll is known as chlorophyll A. We'll get into that in just a second. So as far as structure is concerned, this should be very familiar to you. Um, the chlorophyll has to be embedded in a membrane. We have to stick it in a membrane. And if you understand membranes, you understand that the membrane, all membranes in biology that you know about are always going to have uh, hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. If I have to stick something within the membrane, I have to have some sort of hydrophobic interaction occurring. Remember the transmembrane proteins? Same idea is going on here. What we can say specifically about the structure, and then it reveals a lot about the overall structure of membranes as well, is that chlorophyll has a long hydrocarbon, HC just standing for hydrocarbon tail, um, inserted into the thylakoid membrane. Inserted into TM. And because of this, we now understand that this must mean that that part of the chlorophyll molecule is hydrophobic because it's inserted into the thylakoid membrane. It has to interact with those hydrophobic interior of the membrane. In addition, we consider this uh, idea of this insertion. Uh, we basically would say that this chlorophyll molecule, this pigment molecule, is embedded. It's embedded within the uh, thylakoid membrane and it serves as basically the anchor. Keeps it there, keeps it strong, uh, keeps it steady. So we have a long hydrocarbon tail inserted into the thylakoid membrane that's part of the structure. Another part of the structure you should know is that chlorophyll has a porphyrin ring. P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-N. It has a porphyrin ring. This is an important part of its structure because this is actually the part of the structure that absorbs light energy. So you should obviously understand that and know that. This is a star, worth a star. Um, it absorbs light energy, the porphyrin ring specifically. 
It has carbon and nitrogen within it. And also, um, one sort of fact you should just know off the top of your head is that it has a magnesium ion in the center. We don't need to know the details of why, but specifically just remember that and you see a magnesium ion within the center of a ring-like structure. It's a really beautiful structure if you look at the actual chemical makeup of it that's uh, listed in your textbook. Um, it's a very nice looking structure, very, very, uh, let's say, uh, symmetric, and it's a very nice biological structure. So we have a porphyrin ring that makes chlorophyll. That's the one that does the important job of absorbing light energy. And we also have the anchor of chlorophyll, the long hydrocarbon tail that makes sure it sticks into the TN, the thylakoid membrane. Specifically, chlorophyll A, and this is something you should obviously definitely know, it's considered the primary photosynthetic pigment. It is the pigment that does the dirty work. It does the majority of the work. It is the most famous pigment for a reason. It is the primary photosynthetic pigment. If we remember, one with a degree sign just means primary. So it's the number one. I can just tell you it's the most important photosynthetic pigment. That's all you need to know about that. In addition, um, it has a methyl group. Uh, so it has a methyl group. We can write that down. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it has a cousin that we'll look at in the next video called chlorophyll B that does not have a methyl group. It has something different, and we'll get into that in our next video. Just remember, a methyl group is CH3. Don't forget that from our functional groups organic chemistry lecture. And in addition, uh, what color do you think chlorophyll A is? If it's the most abundant, if it's the main photosynthetic pigment, it, of course, is going to be a nice, bright green color. So now, hopefully, you understand why uh, plants are green. They are green not only because of the chlorophyll present, but be specific. You're a biologist. You're a smart biologist, so you're going to say because of chlorophyll A specifically. Chlorophyll A gives it the bright green hue of plants. We'll look at some other hues of plants um, in our next video, but let's just overall understand that chloroplasts are the area of the plant, the area of the plant cell specifically. It's an organelle within a plant cell, which is a eukaryotic cell, that has this structure. It's a very similar structure to the mitochondria, double membrane, stroma, and thylakoid. Thylakoid is an important part of this structure. It's these stacks that you'll see. The light consequences, we understand that absorption is the one that's occurring in these chloroplasts, and chloroplasts have photosynthetic pigments. Photosynthetic pigments' main job is to absorb visible light, capture and absorb the visible light. How do they do it? They're embedded in the thylakoid membrane. They use things like chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the main guy, main photosynthetic pigment. He makes sure that he's nicely, strongly put into that thylakoid membrane by embedding himself as an anchor using his hydrocarbon hydrophobic tail. He also has a porphyrin ring. That porphyrin ring um, is going to absorb light energy. And the most famous form of chlorophyll is chlorophyll A, primary photosynthetic pigment, bright green color of plants. So in our next video, we'll continue our discussion on chloroplasts.